Hello and welcome to a Hail Trace 2014 Hail Forecast. Uh, if you're like us, you've probably been wondering uh, a little bit of something along the lines of where the hell has the hell been? And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to uh, compare some patterns from past years and uh, hopefully figure out exactly what this year is going to pan out and how it's going to look. So uh, to start off, uh, we wanted to compare the year that we found the most similarities with, which was 2011. Uh, so some of the similarities that we saw from 2011 to compared to what we've seen so far this year, uh, strong winter storms and Arctic air in the south during the month of December. Uh, this was a very similar common pattern that we had in 2011 and again this year uh, we had a similar pattern as well. January warmed up in the south but it was frigid to extremely cold across the Great Lakes. Uh, in both years it was a similar weather pattern. And in February, uh, the cold air came back down to the south, and we had more winter storms in the south, uh, which even continued into the first part of March in some areas as well. And uh, a non-existent hell season was common in both years during the months of January, February, and the first half of March. And changes in ONI, which uh, we'll get into that just a little bit uh, as we head into the uh, presentation here. So well, we're talking about when we're talking about the winter time pattern being the same in the months of December. So both years were were really categorized with cold air that dropped down out of Canada across the plains and the Great Lakes and the East Coast, and then we had warm air in the uh, in the West. And along that area, we had low pressures that would develop and then move across the south creating winter storms uh, some of them fairly far south uh, and then would move across uh, the eastern portion of the United States. We continued into As January we noticed a little bit more of a change in that pattern where the cold air shifted more up to the north and east up into the northeast and the Great Lakes and then the warm air actually lifted up into the south and up into the uh, up into the west uh, a lot more significantly and in this area it was very dry uh, not a lot of rain but we had these little clipper systems that would develop uh, across Canada and then drop south across the Great Lakes region dropping not significant amount of snow but lots of six seven inch snowstorms would move across this area over and over again while the temperatures remained extremely frigid below zero for, for most of the area. So uh, this was common again in 2011 and as well in 2014. So we're starting to see a pattern that's emerged and uh, that pattern really continued as we had of February whereas the cold air shifted back to the south again and we had the warm air back out pushed back out to the west and then low pressure systems would develop along the jet stream and move across the south again. Even as far south as Houston had several winter storms uh, this February. Um, a, a lot of central Texas. I know New Orleans had some winter. We had some winter weather in the Florida Panhandle. Uh, Georgia obviously had the winter weather that everybody heard about with Atlanta being shut down by the uh, couple of inches of snow and that snow continued up into the Carolinas. And this was the pattern that continued through February. We had a little bit of warm weather that lifted up uh, towards the end of February, but then the cold air has come right back down again as we headed into the first part of March. So where does that leave us? Now that we're uh, in the in the end of the second week of March, uh, we want to look at some other patterns out in the ocean because they control the weather a lot when it comes to the U.S. So one of the things that we've noticed uh, in comparison to 2011 is is that we went from 2010 to 2011. We went from a strong La Nina into a weak La Nina. So we had a really big shift in the uh, in the ocean temperature out in the Pacific Ocean. Although we didn't make it up to El Nino, we still had a big shift where that changed. And there's some signs, as you can see, uh, over if you go just past that circle that we've drawn there, where we were actually in a in a weak to moderate La Nina last year. There's some signs that we're actually swinging into the El Nino phase now as we head into the springtime. So that would be another significant change in phase or in water temperature out in the Pacific Ocean. So we've got a hunch that that's going to lead to some similarities as to what happened in 2011 as well. So we're kind of lining up some different similarities and this is something that I like to forecast with are looking back at past patterns and then finding out what the outcome was with those patterns. So let's now, take a look at those patterns and what the outcome was. So this is hell reports so far in the US for the year 2014. All of you know it's been a uh, pretty slow year. We've had a little storm up by Kansas City. Uh, we have found damage by that storm and a couple of storms in Florida and a few scattered around the rest of the U.S., but for the most part, that's been about it. So hardly anything has occurred in the U.S. as we headed through the, through the first part of 2014. 
Well, if we look at 2011, you can see it was an active year. There was a ton of hell in 2011. But the one thing I want you to focus on is this chart on the bottom. This is showing the amount of hell that has happened in the U.S. this year. And then if you notice, in 2011, it was basically non-existent as well. So we had no hell for the first part of 2011. Uh, so again, patterns that are extremely similar um, showing similar results. If we notice though, as we headed into mid-March, April, May, and June, that the activity got extremely, uh, there was a lot of activity. So um, tons and tons of hell. In fact, in April, May, and June, we had over 2,000 reports of hell in the United States on each month. So this was actually more uh, than, than we had in any month over the last several years back to 2011. So we had three consecutive months with better hell output in the US than what we had in any month of 2012 or 2013. All of that in, in uh, 2011. So our forecast is, is that as we head into the second half of March, possibly as far back as the first part of April, that we're going to notice an extreme and a quick pickup in the amount of activity across the United States. Uh, we expect that there's going to be a lot of severe weather, uh, especially anywhere to the east of the Rockies. And that's, so that's going to be our forecast for this year as we head into 2014, is that we are going to see a uh, drastic increase in the amount of hail and activity across the United States just a couple more weeks out and we should begin to see that weather pattern really begin to pick up. So and with a lot of to work, uh, if we're not working with you currently, you're more than welcome to give us a call, ask us some questions about our forecast, or ask us some questions about what it is and how we can help you. Our uh, direct line, our office line is 855-334-4245. That's 855-334-HAIL. Look forward to talking with you. Hope you enjoyed our hell forecast for 2000.